Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and this time I talk about the sequel, which I just got done watching. That's why you saw a little bit of blue. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, with Dennis Hopper, who's no longer with us. Now this is a film... This is probably the very first Chainsaw Master film I saw. And I saw this film really early in my life. Uh, can't remember what age I was, but I know it was very young. Too young. <laughs> um, and it, it freaked me out the first time I saw this film. Because I think this was the first film I saw that was very gory. So that freaked me out. I didn't. I know it was before I even saw the, the very first film, so I, I don't even think I was in middle school. Like I might have been. It might not even been middle school. It might have been even before that. I mean, I know, a long time ago I saw it once. Now the thing with this film, of course, the sequel. I think this is well after. Toby Hooper had done, Poltergeist. Because I think this was 86? Well, yeah, well, yeah, 86. So this was after Poltergeist, not before. After Poltergeist. Well, well after Poltergeist, I believe. Uh, it takes, it's kind of pretty much a sequel to the first film, where you have Leatherface, and you have the, the cook, Jim Seedows. He comes back. Um, you have another guy playing Leatherface, not Gunnar Hansen. Instead, you have uh, Bill Johnson, I believe his name is. And basically, the story is you have this character. She's a DJ uh, called Stretch, played by Caroline Williams. And one night, she, again, she works at the as a DJ disc jockey, and these two yuppies call in. One's called Rick the Prick. I forget what the other guy's name was. And I guess the thing is, back in the day, it was something to do with her radio station. Like, she can't hang up the phone. They have to. So they call once, and then they call again, and that's when they're attacked. They're attacked on the road by Leatherface. And that great scene where they're in the car, and Leatherface is in the truck, and flying the chainsaw at them in the car and that's where you get the Towns of Vini head where the head sort of splits and that was the scene that freaked me out like, oh shit you know when I was a little kid I mean basically what happens is she's not able to hang up they have to and then of course the line goes dead and she has recorded and ultimately she brings this recording to lefty and right Character played by Dennis Hopper, who I'm not sure if he was a Texas Ranger or um, yeah, Texas Ranger. And Dennis Hopper's character, his brother, his brother's kids were the leads in the first Chainsaw Massacre. Sally, and then the the, the kid in the wheelchair, Paul Bartain's character, who got killed. And so Dennis Hopper, he was the uncle of those kids. He's been looking for the the killers ever since. And pretty much the movie goes on from there. I know I'm kind of stuttering because I don't want to make this a 30-minute review or whatever. The the sequel to the film, I know Toby Hooper and then the, the writer here, they actually thought of a, an idea with actually Tim Hankel that it would feature an entire town of cannibals. And it would be called Beyond the Valley of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But then the studio wanted stuff changed, and thus you got this film, which I'm like, Kim Hankel, why didn't you just do that for <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre 4 when you directed it? Instead of doing it, well, I'll get to that, unfortunately. But... One more can I say about this film? I mean, everybody remembers the video poster more where the Chainsaw Master family, they're in the Breakfast Club pose. Like, if you see that pose, it's definitely the 
Like one's like this and one's laying down. It's totally the Breakfast Club pose. And basically Toby Hooper, he did not want to make the same film, so he made a very black comedy. So again, that's basically what he did. This is a comedy, really. And kind of a funny one. And very gory. Very different. So this is a sequel that I do truly enjoy. Get into the review. I do enjoy the sequel. Um, it's a solid sequel. It's funny. It's definitely a different tone. It doesn't rip off the first movie. I mean, if you go through it, what I liked about the film, first off, the, the soundtrack. I Ever since I was a kid, the, the score by Toby Hooper and Jerry Lambert is this very weird, like, it's like the cycle theme, but with like a really fucked up carnival. And also the songs. I mean, you had Stuart Copeland's Strange Things da, 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 at the end credits. They have a lot of good songs on there. But that score, that always creeped me out. I really enjoy it, though. And Toby Hooper and Jerry Lambert did the score. Very creepy. I just always like this is a strange vibe to it, and that's the rest of the film is very strange vibe. Uh, the gore by Tom Zavini is really good. Um, you don't have a big buy count if you, for the most part of the film is three guys until you get to the very end. But so it's not like a big body count film. But what makes this film work is the cast: Caroline Williams, a stretch. She's probably my favorite actress in all the Chainsaw Master films, including the remake and prequel and stuff like that. Caroline Williams I always enjoyed. Uh, I know she got to do a cameo at the beginning of Chainsaw Master 3. I always wonder if she played the same role of Stretch. I, I thought maybe she did. Maybe she went from a, dis, you know, a, a DJ to now she's like a TV reporter. Because she has a little camera. I always wonder about that. Let's see. Then you have Steph Father 2 she was in. Um, Leprechaun, I think, 3. She didn't get on to do much bigger, better stuff, which was a shame. Because Caroline Williams, I really enjoyed her performance. She knew how to scream. But she was very likable. She's a, a Texan. Um, not only did she look beautiful, but there were times where you thought she was strong. She's a really likable character. Dennis Hopper, which I know he's no longer with us, unfortunately. Um, I don't think he was a big fan of this film at all. Not even think that. He was not a big fan of this film. Um, I think around this time he was doing Blue Velvet and Hoosiers. I think someone said one time he got out of rehab, and then maybe that's why he did this film, because he just got out of rehab and wanted to work. But... For whatever reason, he's not a big fan. he was not a big fan of this film, which is a shame because this is a really I think this is one of his better performances, to be honest, as Lefty and Right. Um, a character that Paryu doesn't really like, which I get to, but at the same time, I can't but like him by the end of the film as well. Just a great uh, personality, um, and then the bad guys. I mean. Bill Johnson's Leatherface plays a different Leatherface, really makes it his own. Um, I'm not sure the why Gunnar Hansen didn't come back. I don't know if it was because of money. Maybe it was. But uh, they got Bill Johnson, this guy, who, really enough, this is a guy who was not a fan of violence. 
And I'm like, well, why, why did you take the role? But have you seen like a good guy on the behind the on the Doctor Mirror they have on here? But his leather face, I know. I think a lot of people complain about the leather face because like they think he became a pussy. No, watch Chainsaw Massacre Four. That's how Leatherface becomes a pussy. This though, I mean, they're like the fact is they made this more of a a comedy or black comedy, if you want to say that. Uh, which I know a lot of people got pissed off when it first came out. That's why at when it first came out, people were like, "What? You know, we wanted the ultimate terror again, and now it's a black comedy." I mean, if you see the poster and they're in the Breakfast Club pose, you know, you should have figured that, you know, they're not going down that road again. But Bill Johnson's uh, leather face, almost like he kind of falls in love with Stretch, and you have the scene um, in the radio station where they have like, this tub where they put the beer in, and he's like putting the chainsaw in it, and uh, the water splashing on her face, almost as if he's coming. And yeah, like, he slides the saw against her thigh, not running, of course. And you have like a Beauty and the Beast type of thing, which I actually liked. It made the film different. Um, but you also got a lot of funny moments. Oh man, this is no workout, and but not a parody either. It's definitely not a parody. You definitely get a lot of gruesome sequences. Uh, Lou Perryman, who unfortunately is no longer with us, uh, he plays LG, the friend of Stretch. Very again. Yeah, I think he worked on the first film. Um, behind the scenes, he was on the crew, and he um, his character always spitting, um, but his demeanor was always seems like a nice guy, a guy who probably liked Stretch, but she didn't really know it or just considered him a friend. And he's no longer with us, unfortunately, because of some really shitty circumstances. I mean, Lou Perryman, basically some dumbass who killed someone way off here was running, ran in, randomly into a house, which happened to be Lou Perryman's house, and killed Lou Perryman in order to get out, get away from the cops some more, um, which is pretty sad as well. Bill Mosley as a Chop Top, you know, let my play, you dog dick, you know, basically the uh, character's you can tell a little moment from the the hitchhiker from the first film, but he definitely made it his own. I think uh, Bill Mosley he had done like the Texas Chainsaw Manicure, this was a little short film that Toby Hooper had seen while doing Poltergeist, and he liked it. Um, and then later on, when he did the sequel, he cast this guy, and he just made it as well. I mean, the you have the the metal plate. He's always got the this uh, hanger that he scratches, and then a little piece of skin. He always eats it. He always heats it up to sterilize it, and gets a little bit more. And he gets some really uh, like oh shit moments, like the scene with the uh, in a radio station when Leatherface first pops in. You're like, oh shit. Uh, but yeah, again, he gets some really uh, black comedy moments as well. It's like. Uh, when they hear the 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 tape of them playing, they've heard of it. It's like, was that from the Ramble Three soundtrack? <laughs> what I like about the film, it moves at a good pace. The film is ninety. Well, it's an hour and forty minutes, but it doesn't feel that way. It's a uh, well shot. Everybody from Dennis Hopper, Bill's Mosley, Jim Seidel as the crook from the first film, who he's no longer with us as well. Acting is great. Soundtrack, the, especially the score, is very creepy. Uh, Caroline Williams, I really enjoy in the lead. And again, she, her character, wants to do something more and goes to Dennis Hopper's character. And then this is the part here that I don't like, because you can kind of tell he basically sets Caroline Williams up, saying, oh, you play that tape, and, you know, maybe you can give me some help. But it's like he knew... And even then, when she gets a tat, but then Leatherface kind of lies her, so he leaves and just lies to Bill Mosley <laughs> that he did kill her. And she follows them. I know it's like, why? But uh, she's trying to do the right thing, that's why. 
And then even Dennis Hopper comes up and says, you know, I'm sorry, you know, I used you. And then it's like, oh my god, you know, you asshole. But yeah, for somehow, I still liked him at the end when basically he, like when he gets the, the chainsaw place and he buys all these chainsaws. And he has like two little ones, like holsters of a gun and he has a big one. And like he goes in there and the second half of the film I really love because it's basically like Alice in Wonderland gone to hell. I mean, you didn't really see, if you've never seen this film, but you have seen Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses, you watch this ending, the second half of this film, Rob Zombie, you stole a lot of shit from this film for House of a Thousand Corpses. Your whole underground lair, straight out of this film. Okay. But, uh, I really like the set design of the underground lair. It's like on top is like this amusement park that stopped, that was abandoned or whatever, and down below all these tunnels and just weird like long rows of tunnels with light bulbs and great set design. Um, yeah, really sick moments of plot comedy where. Um, Leatherface finds her again, says, oh, you know, you gotta be quiet, he isn't talk, but he, what she finds out is that her buddy, Lou Perriman's character, uh, his face has been cut off, and Leatherface is gonna help her hide, so he puts her friend's face on hers. and then when he leaves, Lou Perriman wakes up, and his face is off, and it's just this... It's hard to describe, but you, I'm kind of being vague so people will see the film. But that moment is like, what the fuck? In a good way, like, wow, this is crazy shit. And the ending where, uh, you know, she's been caught and Dennis Hopper comes in to, to fight the family and him and Leatherface has that fight. But before, it's like, you know, the cook's like, who are you? And... Uh, Says Hopper's like, I'm the Lord of the Harvest. What's that? Some new health group? <laughs> Some new health food group? This is the way he said it. it was really funny. I mean, nice fight. And um, The only problem that was kind of weird was the last shot because the, the girl, Caroline Williams, she's, she's out of there. And she like does the leather face dance. But it was kind of weird because it's like this kind of weird shot at the end that she's doing the little face dance. But maybe that's the point. Because um, then you end with that song, Strange Things, da 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 da, by Stuart Copeland. But if she's in the beginning of the third film, then you know, maybe that is her character. I don't know. Um, this DVD, though, the end of that, it's a great DVD. You have two commentary tracks. The first one I didn't give a shit about Toby Hooper and David Gregory. Who did the first film's documentary, The Shocking Truth? The better one is with Bill Mosley, Caroline Williams, and Fetz Man, Thomas Vini. That's a lot of fun. That's a ball. You have the lead scenes, including, like, a lot of the body count was cut out. Like, there's a scene where Leatherface and Chop Top, they go to town on all these guys in this parking garage. You see some uh, special Fetz shots. Apparently it was removed for pacing issues, but I'm like, wow, I can't believe that was cut out that they, you know, they would cut that out. You know, special fats and body count, it was crazy. And another one is actually have Joe Bob Briggs, but like he's with these two girls, and um, I actually enjoy, I like the scene because I like Joe Bob Briggs. And he's talking, you know, he's talking about films, and then I think Leatherface pops up, and I think he's... He's killing the two girls, but the, the, the way they end it is in a very funny way. I, you know what? See it. I don't need to describe it. Um, then you have a really good uh, documentary on the making of the film about how they had the strip, but then Canon Films, like they seem to do a lot. They took money, say, they took like a million dollars off, so they had a, the, I said Kim Hinkle, but it's a Kit Carson. He's the one who wrote this film. Kit Carson. He had to keep rewriting and rewriting the film throughout the entire flick. Uh, because they took like a million dollars out, but yet, here you gotta shoot. 
Um, so I guess this review is actually going to 20 minutes now. But I really enjoy the film. I enjoy the cast. Dennis Hopper's a, a hoot. Caroline Williams I really enjoy. Um, it's kind of cool that she actually referenced Amy Steele. Which I'm a fan of Amy Steele. Like there's a scene where she's hiding. And she gets like, you know, those old blocks of ice. You have those clamps. And she holds it to herself for guard. And someone on the counter asks him, you know, what was up with that? And she's like, well, it's my Amy Steele moment. You know, and I thought that was cool. Good reference to Friday 13 Part 2. Um, good reference to Amy Steele. I thought that was cool for Caroline Williams to do that. I thought that was very nice. And she seems like a, a very nice, solid Texan girl. Big fan of Caroline Williams. Um... Yeah, this film was just a hoot and a half. I mean, it was funny. It was entertaining. Uh, made me laugh a lot. Um, I know it's weird saying it made me laugh a lot, but it's it's just it's so over the top. And it's Bill Mosley, so many of his lines, you know, Nah, I'm land. And if you just watch it, you know what I mean. I like the little stuff they threw in, like the th reference to E.T., like when uh, Bill Mosley and Caroline Williams first meet each other in the radio station. He's like, okay, I'll give you the tour. And he's showing her all this stuff, including the little shark. Like in E.T., when Elliot's showing E.T., everything shows in the little shark thing. That's in here. I thought that was a nice reference. E. X. I. T. Exit. I know you're wondering, well, what the hell are you talking about? See the film, you know what I'm talking about. This is a really solid sequel. It's really entertaining. Bloody. Uh, it's, it's a, it is a black comedy. They meant it to be funny. And you can tell. And I'm like, okay, that was a nice way to go. And when this film came out, they decided to release it not rated, which I think was fine. And I think watching this film is why I'm not the biggest fan of this film. Now, this film, I think it's okay. I don't... I, I'm not going to hate this film. But I think it's okay. Because this film, you know... Th you know, I know this is unrated as well. But... And that's not Jeff Burr's fault. Because I know stupid producers... I'll get to that. But still, if you look at the final product... You know, this one is definitely unrated. And just the, the performances, the different direction they went on it, um, very memorable. I actually think this black comedy is kind of more gruesome and sadistic than this serious film. This one, like, this one seems more tame and is meant to be serious than this film, which is meant to be a black comedy. <laughs> You know, just the split in the head and, you know, she having to wear her friend's, you know, face and just the stuff that goes in there. But either way, uh, I'll end it here. If you don't have this gruesome edition, definitely check this out. Um, anyone who has not seen this film, uh, whether it be uh, Michael Keane, anybody, uh, this film is uh, about, you know, it's not your typical slasher movie. It's a great black comedy film. Um, Beauty and the Beast aspects. And Dennis Hopper's a hoot. Uh, he's sorely missed. As well as Luke Perriman and Jim C. Dow. Um, Kit Carson, I think, did a good job with the script. And Thomas and me did a solid job with the effects. The score, they're sort of take on Psycho. But I like it better. It's just creepier. Creepy. But anyway, great sequel, Chester's Chainsaw Master 2, where you hear the line, the saw is family. What more do you want? And yeah, I know a lot of people got pissed because it wasn't the first film, but that was the point. You know, go watch part four. They pretty much tried to remake that movie. <laughs> it fucked up. 
But either way, uh, thanks for watching. Take care and stay tuned for my review of the okay third film. Okay film. Leatherface. Take care and we will see you later. Ciao.